<laughs> oh man, hello world, what is up and welcome to Build. I'm your host Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City and happy International Women's Day. Uh, and what a fantastic way to kick things off. We are super excited to welcome back our first guest to the show. Uh, she's a Second City Toronto and Chicago Main Stage alumna, two-time recipient of the Canadian Comedy Award for Best Female Improviser. You've seen her on Super Fun Night, Another Period, and most recently as Dina, the bird-loving, by-the-book assistant manager at Cloud9 on NBC's Superstore. The show airs Thursdays at 8, just got picked up for its fourth season. Uh, here to tell us all about it, the always awesome Lauren Ash is in the house, everybody. How about that, huh? Yay! Yes! Thank you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. That is the appropriate response to that name. So Lauren will be out here in a second. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, before we get to that, though, I believe we've got a video we're going to take a look at from the show. So, uh, Luke, let's go ahead and run that clip. Why would you take the blame for Kelly's mistake? I, look, I, I was trying to show her that we're friends. Oh, this is about the Jonah crush. Shh. Man, that secret just keeps getting tastier and tastier. Mmm, that is one good secret. Okay, that's enough. Look, can you please just not tell anyone? Hey, like I said, you can count on me. And if you want to sell the lie, I will sell this lie hard. What, 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 what are you doing? I'm trying to work up enough saliva so that we can do a spit handshake. It's, I've got such a dry mouth, I think it's the pregnancy. Oh, don't worry about it, we're good. No, 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 just give me a second, I'll get there. Oh, God, okay. No, Dina, really, I'm good, I trust you. Well, now I'm like a sprinkler, it won't stop coming out. <laughs> Guys, make some noise, Lauren Ash is here. Hey, hello. I'm just sitting here laughing at my own joke, like so obnoxious. I was like, oh, that was really funny. Funny is funny. I'll tell you that. You shouldn't feel bad about that. That was a funny joke. That was a funny moment. Thank you. You were right. It was improvised. That. that was me. Was it really? Yeah. Made it up? Made it up. They kept it in. They kept it in. That's always nice. They do that. Right? They do that for What's us. What's the ratio yeah. of that for you, you think? It depends on the episode, but they do use a lot of our improv, which is nice, because then it makes it feel like you're not screaming into a vacuum, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it encourages you to do yeah. more, because if yeah, they don't use sure. some of it ever, then it's like, what are we even, why are we bothering? No, so. for sure. Screaming into a vacuum, the original title for the show. Also course. the name of my autobiography. Perfect. Look for it, yeah. But small world, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I'm Lauren, kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you so so much for being here and Thanks welcome for back having to the show. Me. Yes. Oh my gosh! Congratulations. We just found thank out season you. four recently. Season four. Very, we could applaud for that. Please do. <laughs> Statistically, it's 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 very impressive. Very impressive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Statistically, you don't have to lean on statistics. No. That's on the face of it, that's just a fantastic, you're impressive right. thing. You're right. You're right. I'm very excited to get into that. I want to talk yeah. a lot about the show. I want to talk about season four, all of that stuff. But first, very important to me. Yeah. How are you? I'm so good. Yeah. yeah how are you though? Me? Yeah. No one ever flips it around like that. You, you see, I'm Canadian though. I should have known that. Yeah. Going in. That's what we do. That's very what we true. Do. Very true. Yeah. I'm fantastic, and I, I'm I'm very very excited that we get more of this show. I know. So am I. Process, you're do, you're doing real well. I'm trying. Real well. We're up here working. Very smart. Well, thank you. He does this for a reason, you guys. Thank um, you very much. Thank yeah. No. I'm so excited we get more of it. I want to do this show forever, so it's the best. Yes. Fingers yeah. crossed. I saw. Uh, hey, did you get a nice snow day yesterday? Are you still working? You still had to run around? I was still running around, but I had a break when it was in the real eye of the storm, and then there was. I had an event. I was going to last night and I kept texting my publicist being like is this happening like it is Armageddon here like it is chaos and I'm from Canada like I'm used to snow but that was kooky well that was what I was gonna say like your perspective as a Canadian how'd we do like was that was that a rough one yesterday because it felt rough for if, me. if the snow had stayed it would have been way worse it would have been way way worse but it, luckily it was that slushy froth yeah. you know I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't realize your your boyfriend had been here before. Yeah, he's been on this show. Yeah, wearing that exact outfit, <laughs> I think sure. too. That was the exact clothes. <laughs> In his defense, I was wearing the same blazer. There you so, go. Yeah, there I, you go. I didn't realize. To be a man. To be a man, oh, I was wearing the same blazer. It's like if we get photographed in the same thing twice, it's like, is Lauren Ash okay? Has she hit rock bottom? She repeated a dress. Oh. Is this the end? This is the end. What does this mean exactly. for Lauren Ash? What does it mean for her? Yes. For me, I don't think anyone's noticed. Honestly. You know what? I, probably not. I, that's 90% that's being a man, though, and also yeah. just like... Who ca Nobody cares what I wear. Yeah, Nobody. that's true. I, I will say this. If I put on a colorful pair of shoes, I get noticed for that. People like it. What they are we do. talking, like a lime green situation? I have, it's, you know, it's funny. Not lime green, yeah. but it is of the green family. Huh. It's, it's very like, like a teal almost, like a, a sea teal? foam. Yeah, they're pumas. They're, okay, they're, a, teal pom a teal puma? It's a teal suede puma. That sounds nice. Those are my fancy feet. I feel like you can pull it off. <laughs> 
I, I've, I heard, I've heard nice things. I have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you heard about WikiFeet? No, what is, we were on. just talking. Have you guys, has anybody here heard of WikiFeet? Yeah, guess what? Welcome to your nightmare. <laughs> so if you're a person of note in the world, there is a database on the internet that collects pictures of your feet and uh, curates it for those who may want to look at it. They, people uh, rate your feet, rank your feet. My favorite is that they try and uh, estimate your shoe size. They estimated mine smaller than it is, which makes me feel really nice. nice right? You know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, they don't look like boat feet when they're photographed. Great. Was um, that, hang on a second. I just walk me yeah, through the moment please. of of like I would say abject horror, maybe a little disgust, but then like oh flattery. Look at so that. Flattering. My number was lower than you my know what? size. I have a good rating on there. I've got like four and a third stars out of five. Oh my God. Yeah, which feels nice. You know what I mean? I mean, oh my gosh, they're 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 people are gonna literally WikiFeet's numbers hits are gonna go up so high today because people are like, how does this thing exist? But the thing that's amazing about it is anybody I know who knows about it has heard about it from somebody who's like, hey, I saw you on WikiFeet, and then it's like. Uh. Hey, bro, what were you doing on WikiFeet? Yeah, uh, and why were you looking for me specifically, your buddy? Oh, yeah. that's so crazy. What yeah. a weird corner of the internet. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's weirder, but yeah. yeah. You know what? I shouldn't judge. Everybody has their Everybody own has thing. Their thing. And totally. just because that's not my thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad It's Exactly. It's a victimless crime. It's it harmless. It is a victimless crime. They're it's taking harmless. pictures that are already out there. They already exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody's like sneaking into my shower just to photograph my feet. Thankfully, nobody's sneaking into my shower at all. I, I should preface say. that, which is the real thing I should be thankful for. Yeah. The hierarchy of things to be concerned exactly. about in that, in that yeah. particular sense. Yeah, more sentence. than the, the pictures of my feet leaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Superstore. Talk to me. Let's. <laughs> 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 not not every segue is gonna be a gonna no be a good thing. No, no. Don't I think um, no <laughs> I, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, I've said this numerous times, but I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, there's so many fun things going on in this season. It, it's official. Dina is now the surrogate for Glenn. That's a big deal. It's crazy. Talk to me about the moment you realized that was the direction they were going with this character, with this relationship between these two. What did you think? It was out of I would say left field for me and very like a fun surprise. It was out of left field for me too and to be honest when I first heard I was like I don't know what people are going to think of that because we've spent three seasons creating this very antagonistic relationship between her and Glenn and I was like are people going to think this is weird but I feel like what we kind of how we did it and how we justified it and and the fact that it's like I was like the thing I could get on board with that I was, was that it was like Dina wouldn't wouldn't want anyone else to do it like she's such a control freak she she ultimately does care about everybody else yeah. even if she dislikes them she cares about them and I think on a level she's like I got this let me do it I'll make sure it doesn't get messed up like I think that that made sense to me yeah. and people have really responded like fans are like super excited about the storyline and have been like messaging me and then only one person posted like are you really pregnant um and i was like why couldn't there have been more speculation like that would have been fun like why does nobody care like america ferrera gets pregnant and there's parades people are like shutting down people aren't going into work they're like she's pregnant and then it's like i'm wearing this belly that's very lifelike and one person was like oh maybe she is in real life maybe they wrote in a real life pregnancy but if you want to hear a funny story about that i got one for you Bring it up. so when i was a kid when i was like 10 my mom pranked me so bad okay it was the first time she was leaving me home alone and i decided to take a shower this is already connected to my last shower story yeah. and uh so she left me home alone and she's like i'll be out for a few hours so i go in the shower i come out and then i thought i heard somebody in the house and i'm like mom nothing Mom, I open the door, because at this point I'm 10 and I've, I've never been scared in my life, so I'm inherently brave. And I'm like, Mom, Mom, I step out, Mom. Ah! She jumps out and scares me. I piss all over the floor. <laughs> Literally all over the floor, because she scared me so bad. I'm crying. And I was like, why is that a funny joke, first of all, yeah. you to, to terrify your 10-year-old child? Questionable. So anyway, I've never gotten her back. And until now. Until now. She so... There is a scene in an upcoming episode where pregnant Dina gets an ultrasound. And so through the magic of television, they created an extremely lifelike latex belly for me to get this ultrasound. And so I was like, I'm going to go for it. So I photographed myself with the belly out, and I sent her a text that said, Mom, I haven't known how to tell you, but the reason why Dina's pregnant on the show is they've written in my actual pregnancy. Here's the photographic proof. Um, and so there you go. And then the flurry of all caps text messages. What is going on? Calls, calls, calls. And I'm like, 
I'm gonna just sit in this for a few minutes and just like revel, like 10 year old me is high-fiving now me, going like, thank you for getting her back. So then I had Ben Feldman and um, one of our makeup artists film me calling her on speakerphone to, to like, you know, and I'm like, hi. And she's like, what's going on? And I was like, I just didn't know how to tell you. Like, I thought this was the best way. She's like, I'm having a heart attack. And then I, uh, I reveal, of course, it's just a prank. It's a fake belly. And there's a long pause. And she's like, I said, this, this is getting you back for when I was 10. And she just goes, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Very resigned. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and it was. We're even now. It was. <laughs> but yeah, that was probably the best prank I've ever pulled in my life. Is that is that a Canadian thing to scare your 10-year-old daughter? In the I would, let's get her on the phone. I have let's no idea. Right now. She's here right now. Let's possess her. I have no and idea. Jump out. So, and, and, was like, and like to this day, if you ask what's Lauren Ash's number one fear, anybody who knows me, home invasion is my number one fear. And I think it has to be tied to that experience. I'm no doctor, but I certainly I, think it has to be tied I to that I also have a thing where I can't shower with the door closed. I'm like, again, like, it's like, where's, like, lay down on the couch, Lauren, tell us all about it. There's no need, because I already can therapize myself on this. At this you point, know? you've practically invited the, uh, the researchers from WikiFeed into your home, though. They, you realize they're, they're that. Coming they're coming I'll, over. They're coming over right we'll now. We'll have a tea. Yeah, you've, uh, you've left. I'll put out some scones. I'll give them some tea. We'll have a talk. You know have what I mean? Good time. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> that's, that's an incredible story. Thank you. I, I'm really curious about... <laughs> One of the things, I'm going to bring it back to the show. Yeah, sure. One, yeah, one the, yeah, we've one, gone very far away. I no, I love it. One of, <laughs> it's the whole beauty of this show. Yeah. One of the things I do love about this particular season with Dina, uh, is coming out of the, the, the hurricane, we got to see a little bit of vulnerability. Uh, at the, uh, the Golden Globe party, we got to see her like really be there for eight, like All these fun moments where we get to see that softer side. She is a hard ass, but there's a very soft side. And you're right, she cares about everybody. I'm very curious about how she handles pregnancy. Now, you found out about season four at the end of your table reads, right? So you've done all of season three. We've done all of season three. We okay. are officially finished. Yeah. So without giving anything away, talk sure. about exploring that. Talk about taking Dina on that journey and being pregnant with Dina and what that was like. You know, it's been really fun. And I think that that's what people are most excited about is like getting to see this character and, and, and you know, how, how does one react to pregnancy hormones, for example? You know, in general, it can make people crazy. Um, so when you take someone who's already crazy, then what happens? Um, what's cool is, is that I actually got to write an episode of the show this season. And so the episode that they assigned me was kind of really getting into Dina's, like, uh, pregnancy journey, which was really, really cool. And so we get to see some pretty fun stuff. I, I, I will say that it's not necessarily a smooth journey for her. Um, and why would, why would it be? That would be the most boring television ever and then Dina got pregnant and then nothing happened, nothing happened. she had the baby episodes. no complications totally fine. totally fine everything's great so um yeah so we, we definitely get to see her kind of struggle with that and see what it brings out in her and all of those things and it's it's been like it's been so fun and it, it's made her relationship with Glenn super interesting even if it isn't directly directly um connected to the pregnancy it's 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 kind of like shifted how they relate to each other the Dina Amy stuff is like I love it so much. I love their relationship. I love that Dina's like, of course, you know, I'm her best friend, but she's not mine. When we all know, it's like Dina doesn't have any other friends. She's, you know, she's making that up. Um, but yeah, so it's really cool. There's some really cool stuff coming along that storyline for sure. Let's talk about the, the writing. That's very exciting that you got yeah. to write. Congratulations. That's so much fun. Um, what was that like for you? How did that even come about? How'd you, how'd you get the chance to do that? Listen, I am of the school of thought that it's like you never get anything unless you let people know you want it. So, uh, I, yeah, the beginning of the season, I was like, I don't know if there would ever be this opportunity, but I just wanted to say that I'm interested if there is, and here's a sample script that I've written. And uh, you don't submit for the, your own show. You, you, it's like a completely, it was a pilot that I wrote that's completely different, but as a, as a sample of writing. And um, I didn't hear anything back, and I didn't really expect to. I was like, it's kind of a long shot, and I'm sure, like, <laughs> I'm sure he also just doesn't want to talk to me, like, oh, this actor's asking for this thing. Um, but then I got an email in December, and it was like, would you be interested in writing one of the last episodes of the season? And I was like, yeah. So when all my castmates had another two weeks vacation around Christmas, I was in the writer's room breaking the story, and we worked on it all together. And, yeah, it was a really cool process, and it was really awesome. The week that we shot that episode, the writer gets to be on set to kind of, like, pitch other jokes and all alternate jokes and stuff like that. And it was so fun for me because I'm like, normally I only get to improvise my own jokes and now I can improvise everybody's jokes and just run in and tell them what to say. That's so cool. Um, so yeah, it was so, so fun. It was like a really creatively 
fulfilling experience for sure. Would you consider it, was it like a huge advantage? You've been on the show for a couple of seasons now, so you know the voices of every character. So yeah. was it easier for you? Because I know you've written before, you've done something yeah. before, but what, what was different about writing for your show? It was exciting exactly for that reason. It was like, it was like, what do I, like, what are all the things I want Mateo to say? What are all the things I want Glenn to say, you know? And, and Sandra was another one that I got some really good jokes in there for that I was really excited about. So yeah, it, it, did, it did make it interesting. And having that kind of like intimate connection to Dina and then again, like the relationship with Amy, there's, there's some good scenes in my episode between them. That's something that I love. Cause we also just like love that dynamic. And like season two, there wasn't a lot of Dina Amy stuff. And we both independently without knowing complained. <laughs> <laughs> we complained to the show runner. We were just like, yeah, we need more Dina Amy here. We're like, what are we doing? Because I just think that's such a fun dynamic. Yeah, there, there definitely is something there that is just so much fun to watch. Rizzoli and Isles on exactly. acid, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Totally enough. Great reference point. Thank you so much. Um, so you said you, originally when you submitted your spec, you, you don't write for your show. You have to. Was it original pilot that you had uh, come up with? Did you write a spec for a show that you loved, that you used to watch all the time? Like, how, how did that work? What it did, was an original pilot. Okay. Yeah. So um, based on, like, years of terrible dating stories and stuff. <laughs> I would take it very dark. It's, it's not, like, definitely not the tone of Superstore at all. Very much more uh, cable, I'd say. Like a HBO type, like girls, but more depressing, maybe? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. You're, you're um, really good at pitching this. Yeah, show. yeah, it's really sad and kind of depressing, and you know, no you one would ever want to watch it. watching it. Yeah. yeah, exactly, you feel bad about yourself, you question your own choices. Uh, yeah, no, it was like based on my life and stuff like that, and, and crazy real life stories that I then like slightly fictionalized, and yeah. Did you, so, did you like secretly you fold anything? Did you like take anything from that? She thought it was a really funny joke or bit and like mold it into your Superstore script. Like this would work or no, it went I off. did not, but I think there was a couple of things in my script that were like old things that I had improvised on previous episodes of the show. I was like jamming into the, <laughs> into the script. I'm like, oh, this joke didn't make it before. Maybe it'll make it now. I also do that with improv all the time. Like if something doesn't make it, I'll just force it and force it and force it. Like, America and I have a dream that Dina and Amy went to high school together and we've just never learned this before and we have we we force it so often like in improvs like well that's like when you were in 11th grade and it, it, it never makes it they're not interested in it but you know we're still gonna push for it got a second i when i was doing my research just to make sure i had all my facts right here i saw like some headline was like dina and amy apparently went to high school together at some yeah. point so you that's not like canon like no. that's not in the show you guys no. that's just like you're not at thing. all and i saw that headline come out and that was an interview i did and i was like what have i done now i've like put out there that it's like this is backstory and it's like no no i was just speculating that it was like we want that we thought that we, uh, my dream of course is just to see a flashback yeah. i want to be i want to see dina embraces you know what i mean how much fun teen dina but i want to see dina before she got jaded because yeah. nobody's born that way right or are they well good question yeah. That's I, something you could explore. That, well, there we are. Please, your lips to their ears. <laughs> um, you know, talking about uh, uh, all the fun stuff to come ahead. You, you got to write an episode. Do we? Can you tease us anything that's that's coming up? Do we get to see Jerusha again? Does Carrie Kenny come back? Oh, I Carrie mean, Kenny is back. Oh, yes, thanks. she's in my episode that I wrote too, and that was a real fun character to write for too. Yeah, she's so hilarious, and like I was such a fan of hers from Reno 911, and I. She came on the set and I was like, don't be a dork, don't be a dork. So like, it, I waited till the last day and then I was like, I just wanted to say, I didn't want to lead with this, but like, you're amazing. Yeah. Um, Cause she's literally one of the funniest humans on the planet. And her and Mark McKinney together in that Golden Globes episode yeah. just killed me, killed me. There was so much stuff that like they improvised that didn't get used, that's a shame. You're amazing. That's that's a um, Bless. period. Bless all right, it. but I have to ask because as you tell these stories about all these these celebrities that you've met and how you you tell yourself it's like any normal human being, don't freak out, don't freak out. Even three to four seasons in, has it become normal that you're working with McKinney, that you're working with Carrie, that you're working with people like this? You get to improv with people like this, these legends, especially as a Canadian. Yeah, it's it's not lost on me. It really never. I don't think it will ever be truly normal. I mean, M Mark McKinney is like my show growing up was Kids in the Hall. Like, he's one of the reasons that I even have an interest in doing comedy. Like, when I found out that he was going to be in the show with me, I, I didn't even know. I was like, I, how's, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. And then I tell the story. I may have told this the last time I was here. I can't remember. But we improvised the, in the pilot, in the break room. We improvised a scene, and they just let us go. And this is, like, not knowing. Like, again, it's the pilot episode. And after, like, five full minutes, they called cut, and he turned to me, and he's like, oh, I feel like you just taught me a class on improv. And I burst into tears. I like turned, I was like, uh, 
<laughs> like literally, like I had to step away because it was just like when it's like your idol is is complimenting you, like that's a life thing. Like that's like a huge life moment, and it's a huge thing. And he's like the sweetest human. I also will tell you this because this story like is the best. So after my week writing on the show and I'm like running on set and like pitching jokes for people or whatever, Mark takes me aside at the end of the week and he's like, you came alive. Seeing you that week running on set, he's like, I've never seen you more alive. You need to direct, you have to pursue it. My birthday comes, there's an email in my inbox and he's bought me a masterclass on directing with Ron Howard. And again, I sobbed. I was just like, it's such like a dad thing to do. Like, this is sweetest. And like, he's so encouraging. And he's like, I was your, he's like, I, when I was your age, I should have started directing. I waited another 10 years. He's like, don't do the same thing I did. And I was like, okay, Mark McKinney, who I watched every week as a child for like eight years on television. I'll listen to you. I know, but that, yeah, it's just like the sweetest person. You thought 10-year-old you peed when she got scared by her mom. If you yeah. told 10-year-old you that one oh. day, one day, oh. right? Yeah, I would never have believed it. It's yeah. unfathomable, yeah. It's Amazing. the best. We're going to turn over to the audience in just a second. There was yeah. one more thing I wanted to bring up that uh, that, I, that I was really excited to ask you about. You yeah. you had a, a nice role, a small role in The Disaster Artist this yeah. year as the florist, yeah. which was fantastic. Um, uh, how much of a fan were you of the room when you got into that? How did you get involved with that? The biggest fan oh, yeah. of the room. So I got an audition to play um, one of the people that were in the actual movie, if you know what I mean. Um, like a wardrobe girl who was on set. Yeah. And I was like, so excited because I was like, I want to be part of this, whatever. Right. Yeah. But then I got to the audition and I just started chatting with the casting agents. I was like, oh my God, I am the biggest fan of the room. My favorite scene is the flower shop scene. And they were like, oh, we haven't cast that yet. Do you want to read for that too? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we need it to be like as close. Like you need to like mimic the part. So we pulled it up on YouTube. I like watched it twice. I was like, okay, great. I did the other audition too, but I was like, yeah, eh. I don't care about that part. Everyone's like, that's a bigger part. And I was like, you want to play the florist. That's who you want to play. You don't want to play one of the, you know, the people in the thing. You want to play the iconic character. And, uh, and yeah, and so then I got the call and I, I don't even know if they saw anybody else for the role. I, I have no idea, but I was so stoked. It was like the best. And then when you, I saw the movie and they did the side by side at the end, I was like, this is the best. It was so cool. Such a cool experience. Yeah. Um, the, the obligatory Franco's question, wh yeah. how were the Franco's? Wh wh yeah. Was James, was he was he like being your Tommy as far as you could tell? You know, he, Did he embody it? Did he he kept the accent going on and off set, definitely, but um, I, don't, I don't really feel like he was in character the whole time, but uh, it was, I mean, it's eerie how much he like looked like him and like his, I don't know what his acting process is, but like, I, I watched that movie and I was like, what an amazing performance. Like, it's it's actually kind of creepy <laughs> that he managed to like, because I really think a lot of it, he caught a lot of nuance yeah. that I didn't, uh, that I think could be lost. Because it'd be very easy to caricature that kind of person. Tommy Wiseau, you know, shocking, it'd be easy to caricature him. But I feel like, like James just did an amazing job. I thought it was really, really awesome. Well, that's always the hallmark of like when somebody really nails it is when you're watching the performance and you see things you never noticed about that person exactly. before. And then you go back and you're like, holy crap. But like, even like one of his eyes is like smaller than the other. Like, I don't know what, again, the makeup thing was, but like, it was, yeah, I was just like, wow, that's amazing. Did you yeah. get to meet Tommy? I did not, but I was at um, I was at an event Sunday night at the Elton John Oscar party. You're welcome, and um, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, that, I was like, how am I getting invited to this thing? I'm gonna tell everybody. I'm like, this is I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm peaking. Um, but he walked in at one point. And I was like, oh my god, it's Tommy Wiseau, and then I was like, this isn't this isn't no. I'm just gonna let him go. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what that interaction would be, but I was like, I think just seeing him like this close to me was enough. Yeah, I was in his I, I was in his airspace. Can I tell you something? I, here's, yeah. uh, I love you get to the Elton John Oscar party and you're starstruck to see Tommy Wiseau and then I found out Farrah Abrams. Okay, listen. <laughs> like I am the biggest Teen Mom fan huge on the planet. Fan, yeah. And my publicist, Whitney, who's also one of my very best friends, we are so obsessed. Like, we text about it constantly. Like, we love it. We read all the Teen Mom books. the like the autobiographies that they do. Like, we are obsessed. And then we heard from somebody else. They were like, you know, Farrah's here. And we were like, oh, no. Oh, you're kidding. And then I turned around. I was like, we can't get our hopes up. This is a giant. Spot. Oh, my God. She's right there. Right there. Oh, my God. And uh, she was so lovely. She was so kind. It was That's great. It was the best. Well, uh <laughs> Yeah, you Tommy was Owen Farah. Oh, no. uh, those at are the, the big John at the Elton John party. party. And, uh, Elton was there too, but ah, uh, you know, you know, you've seen Elton. Who cares? Uh, 
<laughs> I'm kidding. He's amazing. Icon, icon. I, I could do this with you all day. I, uh, you Bless are an you. absolute delight, Thank but you. but we do have to allow our wonderful audience to ask some yeah. questions. I promised them they could. That's I got to keep good on my word here. We're going to yeah. turn We have some microphones in the room. First question looks like it's coming right from here. Hey, Lord, big Hi. fan of your show. Um, who's the best person you ever worked with on your... On Superstore. On Superstore? Yes. Oh my gosh, that's such a tough question to ask. Other than the main cast, or do they count too? They all count. They all count? Okay. Well, first of all, it's really hard to choose if I had to choose between all these yahoos, because each one of them brings me so much joy in so many ways. But um, we've had some like awesome guest stars too. And we have a new character that's coming out, uh, who's like a new district manager, who is amazing. Oh, man, I don't know how I could choose just one. That's so, so hard. I mean, it's it's like Nicole is so fun because that dynamic is really funny. And getting to do the stuff with Colton when, when those two were dating was amazing. America and I just improvise forever, even if it's completely unusable. Uh, ben, ben is like the funniest actor like he's such an, an actor in real life but he's so funny and he doesn't he's always like i can't improvise and i'm like yes you can you do it every day and you're great at it uh my goal in life is to make nico santos laugh uh in scenes i want to ruin takes and i can ruin him like that i can just like look at him like sideways and he'll laugh and then mark of course is like my idol completely but then also like michael bunin who plays jeff is so much fun and and coleco who plays sandra is so much fun it's so hard i can't just choose one is that a terrible answer <laughs> okay, all right. Technically, all right. you chose all of them. I did. You but go. you know who else was really great was Howie Mandel. Because I worked with him before on a prank show, and he came on and he did an episode of our show this season. And he was so funny, and he was so game to make fun of himself. We had so And there was a lot of improv that they didn't use, which was a shame. I was like, are, are you cool if we do like a whole like making fun of your germ thing? And he's like, please. And he's like, hug me and hug me for too long. And I'm like, are you comfortable with me hugging you for too long? Because I know you hate this. And he's like, no, 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 it'll be funny. It'll be funny. So yeah, he was a real joy. He, he would be my favorite this season of the guest stars. I chose. There we are. Perfect. I, for, thank you for that question, first of all. I'm surprised with your childhood trauma that you worked on a prank show. I worked on two. I worked on one called How We Do It, and I worked on a show called Scare Tactics, where we scared people. And, and maybe that's part of it. Maybe I'm working out some stuff I didn't even know I was working out. Just working through it. That's I'm working that's through it, man. You know, yeah. you got it. <laughs> we got a time for a few more. Uh, one more question or two more? Whatever it is, we have at least one here. Let's start with this. Hi. Hi. Um, so you just kind of mentioned about making people laugh on set. I was wondering if there's ever been a situation where you guys just can't film because you're laughing so hard because of what's in the script. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, and then also, like, we start to laugh because we're laughing. And then it's like you don't know why you started laughing in the first place, but then, then we've, like, ruined eight takes. Th this one, I literally just, like, if she, if I see, like, a little smirk, I literally will like just try to get in her eye line and she'll have her head down and I'll literally be like across the room like just trying to do this and then it's, we just ruin it. We ruin takes constantly. Um, there's a lot of laughter. There is, there is. Like it's sometimes hard and then again you like once you start giggling it's hard to stop. Um, that's consistent. Um, yeah, but people always say they're like, we don't know how you get through it without breaking up. And it's like, we don't. We, <laughs> we ruin takes constantly. And I'll also say having just been in the editing room to cut together the episode that I wrote, I, you can, I'm like, oh, wow, we screwed the end of that beautiful take. <laughs> People just broke through it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the best job. We have the best time. It's amazing. Did that experience change your perspective on how many takes you guys screw up when you were in the editing room and seeing it? You're like, oh, man, we, enlightening. man, we do this a lot, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's enlightening. Wow, there's a lot of them. And there's also, I found out there's an assistant whose job it is to um, find and, and catalog every improv so that they have this like catalog in, in the episode where it's like, well, there's like eight different versions or whatever. And I was like, what a thankless job that must be because there's so much of it. We mess around so much. But yeah, I mean, they do an amazing job. Our editors are amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm getting this thing. I got to wrap this right. up, uh, unfortunately. But uh, a couple of things. One, thank you. Thank you for being you. here and hanging out with us and yeah. sharing all these wonderful stories. Thank you for making this fantastic show. Uh, yeah. And congratulations, season four. So excited. Uh, Superstore, Thursdays, 8 on NBC. Everybody, please make some noise. Lauren Ash, Thanks, come on. Guys. Thank you.